Sega challenges you with the ultimate video game, the Sega Master System, with twice as much memory oh, yeah? as any other video game. Advanced video technology like scrolling backgrounds, graphics in 64 colors, digital sounds, and light phasers. And you can add to the excitement with sports pads, control sticks, and the first video games ever in 3D. Sega's the one. The Sega Master System. The challenge will always be there. So here it is, the final video for the Sega Master System collection, all for you guys to recommend for us to play. On the channel, uh, do not forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can keep up with our daily Let's Play videos. But on to the final Sega Master System games, which are arguably the best the system has to offer, or some of the most interesting and fun. I hope you guys enjoy this last one, and look forward to the next system after this. So in this last video, the first game is Rambo 3, and unlike the NES version, Rambo 3 on the Master System is a light gun rail shooter in the lines of Operation Wolf. So the light phaser supported. What makes the game uh, unique compared is as long as you have ammo and you keep refilling the ammunition, the gun is fully automatic so you can just hold the, hold the, the trigger down. Once it runs out, you have to pull the trigger each time the uh, shooting. The game goes through a number of levels, and you just basically rack up points, and the level will seemingly just keep it on repeat until it's done. So there's not much to it, but it's a ton of fun for sure. But yeah, it's basically your Rambo in a first person view, you have a life bar, and you just try to maintain it as you shoot through the level and see how far you can get. It's a light gun game, so there's not really much else to say. So next up is Zillion 2 The Tri-Formation Cycle, which is a horizontal platform game, I guess? It's the sequel to Zillion. Unlike the previous adventure-based format, this has been changed to this level bike platformer. And through the stages, you ride this motorcycle called the Tri-Formation. And it's nuts. It's... There are eight levels in the game, and, but, and the similarities are basically, it's still based on the anime of the same name. JJ carries the gun with the model similar to the light phaser. And when you get the right equipment throughout the game, you get, you get to turn this three-wheeled motorcycle into the Armorator, which is a flying suit of armor. So there are cool things to this game. A lot of people weren't too into the game changing from its Metroid-esque style. But it is still a fun game, to say the least. However fun the last game was, in this one, since it's a platformer, and the fact that the level is continuous, meaning you can't stop your character, makes the game much harder. It makes you memorize the level on a level that you're not used to. In any platformer, to say. Now, that goes without saying that... As you progress through the game, yes, it does get harder, it requires more mem memorization, but there's something fun about it that Zillion does right, that many games of its kind, even today, just don't have. But the fact remains, you get a life bar that depletes when enemies shoot you. If you land in a pit, it in it's instant death, and there's not in infinite continues. It's too arcadey for a home console. It should have done what Alice Kid in the Last Stars did, where... You got infinite continues, that way you have fun playing the game. I don't really recommend this unless you're a Zillion fan. So here's a game that's been featured as a full playthrough on the channel already, and it's one of my favorite of all time on the Sega Master System. It's Shinobi. And it's, in the sense of Zillion 2, it's kind of like an arcade port where you don't get infinite continues. However, there is a level select so you can practice at the game, so you can try and beat it in one playthrough. I love the platforming aspect, the controls are, are simple and fluid, the difficulty is definitely there, as there are some, there's a couple cheap bosses, and there's a couple jumps that really irritate the player to the point where you might game over just because you can't make this really impossible leap. Watch the playthrough and you'll see what I mean. Now what I do like about the game is the fact that each level feels much different. I don't like the difficulty of the bonus stages that you earn, 
and that's how you get your weapon upgrades in which you can only use it once each upgrade once and it just clears the enemies out depending so if you get whether it's your sword upgrade or your nunchuck or whatnot you basically need these things to progress through the game quicker although it is possible to beat the game with just the shuriken weapon and that's okay i love the i love some of the bosses but there's two in particular i don't like and you'll see why if you ever watch the, watch the playthrough that we did shinobi is definitely a must have for the sega master system and i recommend anybody who has that who has this system so here's probably the must have title if you have a sega master system it's Alex Kidd in Miracle World, arguably the best game on the system. It was released in 1986 in Japan, 1987 everywhere else. And it's a platform game in which Alex Kidd has a one-hit kill system. However, there is a password system so you can go back to the game. Thank God that does exist. A player must finish each level and overcome various obstacles and ghosts and whatnot and puzzles of sorts in this 2D side-scrolling environment. There are 17 stages in this game. Crazy, especially with this one-hit system, so it's punishingly difficult. However, this difficulty does not deter you. It is so much fun to play this game. I do have an issue with each boss battle since it's just a rock-paper-scissors game, and once you memorize what the boss is going to do, it really takes away that joy of beating a boss. Nevertheless, it's the stage, it's the st playing the stages that make the game. You all, upon each level, finishing each level and progressing through it, you get various items, let's say a uh, motorbike or a pedal helicopter, for example, so you can just cross the stage in this just crazy fashion. It's a ton of fun. Now, one way to continue the game with the three lives at the beginning is to hold the two button eight times during the game over screen. Just do it and you'll see what I mean. It's absolutely nuts. The plot is something that is so long that you're just going to have to look up a Wikipedia article to really understand it. It's very detailed. Something about Alex Kidd learns from a dying man something and then he must defeat these guys and he discovers a prince and oh it's just absurd you would never have guessed it based on this game this game was incredibly successful and for good reasons everything from the music to the way Alex Kidd maneuvers through the game and even the hit detection is all done so well you actually don't seem to mind once you get good enough at the game of the one hit system you will get annoyed and you will get frustrated but Alex Kidd is a staple of the Master System, and I can't iterate this enough. It's a must-have title. So rounding out the Master System collection is another arguable best game on the system, which is Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. Now, people could argue that the PC Engine version is uh, superior, but... Let's go with the Master System, since I believe that's what it originally came out on. I could be wrong. It's actually being remade to this day, developed by Lizard Cube and published by .emu. So let's hope that's just amazing, because this game is amazing. Basically, you're the main character, Wonder Boy, has been cursed by the Mecha Dragon. Not to be confused with Godzilla, no way. And... You must locate the Salamander Cross to lift this curse. The game is non-linear, much like um, some other Wonder Boy games, in which you must let, navigate through these various landscapes and use your newly found dragon powers and to go across the game. You can compare it to a Castlevania or even a Metroid, but it's a lot more straightforward and simple than a Metroid-based adventure. It was definitely Game of the Year for the Master System when it came out. It's one of the greatest games of all time. I highly encourage people to play this game. Not only did you, do you get to control the dragon, he also gets cursed into other types of animals, and you can utilize the, the, uh, the weapon system that those get 
throughout the game and to access more areas. It's so much fun. You uh, you become a lizard man. You can become the human again. It's it's great. Um, you do receive a password system so you continue the game later, which is another great innovation that the the master system have in a lot of their titles. That even though Nintendo had had it, it didn't seem to be in as much carts as Sega did with this system. So unlike what the original Wonder Boy did, this one just made it so much better, and you, you can even compare this to uh, the gem that Psycho Fox was, which I covered in uh, monthly pickup videos. So you gotta get Wonder Boy, Dragon's Trap. You, c I can't iterate how great this game is through all the differently themed levels from beginning to end. And that was it. That was the entire Sega Master System collection. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button, by the way. Uh, to reiterate, the three games we didn't cover that I, that we do have, which were covered in the monthly pickup videos, is Psycho Fox, Ken Seiden, and Wonder Boy in Monsterland. If for some reason I get more Master System games, which I do expect, once I get a certain number, then I'll do another uh, collection update video. The next system covered will more than likely be the Wii U, and I hope you guys look forward to that one, as since the Nintendo Switch is coming out, that the Wii U is pretty much done. I hope you guys look forward to that later.